Hi guys, uh, this is just going to be a little review of the Night Sight Wolf. Now, everyone has seen Night Sight products for a very long time. Uh, started off with the NS50, then the NS200, and they've just kept on evolving. And this is, this is the latest product of the evolution of Night Sight. Now I've been using this for a few days now, I haven't got it for very long, so I was, I was really pushed into uh, to getting out and getting the most out of it in a short period of time. So the first day I had it, I had about half an hour to figure out how it went on the rifle, how to set it up, and then I had to go rat shooting. Well, I went rat shooting with the gamekeeper, went through a few pheasant feeders, and there was a lot of rats. He says there was nowhere near as many rats as there normally is, but there was more than I'd ever seen. Um, I think we shot about 20, and I'll roll that footage in at the end with some running commentary on how I found the Night Sight performed. So the Night Sight Wolf is the model that reaches 300 meters. It's the one in between. There's the Viper, the Wolf, and the Eagle. Uh, the Viper's the one more suited to air gunning. The Wolf's the one more suited to sort of rim fires and HMRs and things like that. And the Eagle's the one for big guns. Uh, the one that really, really reaches out there. But this one was perfect for me. I only needed to spot to about 100 yards. That way I could stalk into it. Um, to be honest, I didn't even need that. Probably 60 yards max. So let's crack open this box and see what's inside. So the first thing I noticed was this auto pressure release. I'd imagine this makes it ideal for on flights and things like that. Uh, the clips are really sturdy. I can't imagine these ever letting you down or snapping or accidentally coming undone or anything like that. Um, and this box is just built like a tank. It's like it's like a military bit of kit, um, and I, I can't fault it. Everything fits in perfectly, and these hinges on the side again, just built purely for reliability. Um, I've, yeah, lovely, lovely box. Moving on to what's inside. So as you can see, inside the box you get a few things. Some extras that I've got very kindly from Night Sight was this rangefinder, and this was a godsend. I don't think I'd have had an anywhere near as good a night as I did the other night without this rangefinder. I think my furthest rat was about 45 yards, something like that, and I would have no idea how far it was without this. How the rangefinder works is there's a little LCD screen. Um, I'll go through the menu settings in a minute, but I just stuck it on yards and let it let it run. You can see where, where the laser's shooting through the night sight. There's a little, a little dot, and you just put that on your target. It tells you how far away it is instantly and then you can just adjust the way you need to aim and take your shot. So I'll go into a little more detail about that later. What else comes in the box? You also get the recording unit. Now this is, again, a fantastic bit of kit. And it slips on the back of your scope using one of these adapters, depending on how big your scope is. It slips in there, and then this goes onto the back of your scope. Now, you might ask, what's different between this and the NS200 and the NS50? Well. There's three main reasons. One, you can turn it on and off via this button. Before on the older models, if you plugged it in, it was on. That was it. You had to unplug it to turn it off. So if you left it plugged in and you just turned the screen on, you were still wasting camera battery. Number two, you've got a really handy recording button, which is why I wanted to have a test with this because, as you know, this YouTube channel relies on good videos for people to watch. So having this here, just a, a quick press of the button and it was all ready to go. Unlike the older units where you had to have a, a separate mini DVR on, the, on your rifle as well, which was bulky, time consuming, and not helpful in the field whatsoever. But this one, simple memory card, comes with a four gigabyte micro SD, just there. When you get home, just plug that into your computer and watch your footage download onto your, onto your uh, hard drive. The third main reason why this is such a cracking upgrade to the older ones is the focus wheel on the side. Now this adjusts the camera. I'm gonna do a close up in a minute, but it adjusts the camera. So you can see it turning inside and that allows for perfect focus on the scope without having to jiggle it around on the back, which again was a, a faff with the older model. Also comes with a battery. This battery is so much better than the old one. Uh, the old one stuck on the side of the rifle, again, really bulky, not ideal when you're walking through the fields trying to shoot a few bunnies or a few rats. This one's much lighter, much more sleek and compact, and it just goes on your scope, so it's not adding any other uh, width to the rifle, which is perfect. Obviously, you get your charger, and just plugs into the wall, charges your battery unit, and you've also got the main screen and illuminator. Now this is, the, this is what uh, 
what impressed me also, this has got an adjustment knob on the side so you can change how dim or bright the screen is. Previously you'd have to put a piece of tape, uh, a bit of film over the screen to dim it down to stop the glare back onto your face, but this one you just turn it down, far more stealthy in the field. Also, you've got your illumination settings, so you can put it really high up, uh, you know, fire a, an infrared beam at 300 yards, or turn it right down and fire one out to 50 yards and that'll save battery as well. With the screen dimmed right down and the illumination dimmed right down, you're gonna get a lot of battery life out of this. I'm not entirely sure how much battery life it is, but when I know, I'll check when I get back, I'll put it just here. And of course, you've got your various mounting brackets. So you've got the mounting bracket there for the, uh, the 30 mil scope. You've also got one for the 25 mil scope or the one inch scope, as is on my rifle here. And you also get the uh, the bracket to mount the rangefinder. And I must say, rangefinder comes separately. You gotta buy that separately. Um, there is a cutout slot in there for the um, for the rangefinder, should you buy one, but I think that's an extra 250, 300 pounds. I'm not 100% sure, but again, I'll, uh, I'll put it in the description or, or just here. So enough talking what comes in the box. Um, we probably all know what comes in the box of watching other videos. Let's see how long it takes to get on the rifle and uh, get shooting. Okay, so let's get this set up. Some of you will be asking, I know you will, what bipod I've got on. This is a detachable bipod and I've had it for a few months now and it's cracking. It's called the Spartan, made by Javelin and for what I'm doing with HFT shooting one day, hunting the next day, this is an excellent addition without me having to unscrew my sling and my bipod every time. Let's get on to, uh, to mounting this system. So what goes on first? Well, the bracket goes on first. This is super easy to put on. So uh, just take the bolt out. It comes with a, a bolt and a nut. Take these two pieces out. And this is a really pliable plastic. So as long as you, this is the 25 mil, make sure if you've got a 25 mil scope, you use the smaller one. 30 mil scope, use the bigger one. This just bends down and snaps into place on your rifle. Now your bolt goes in, slips into that hexagonal uh, slot there, and then your, uh, your little nut, nut bit goes on the back. I'm just going to take my hat off so you can see me a bit better. I just have to cope with the sun in my eyes. In fact, you know what? I won't. Okay, that's a bit better. Okay, so first what you want to do is unscrew the little bolt, put it down somewhere safe, back in the case preferably. Uh, and then you can slide your main unit on. Just goes on there then, range finder. Um, mine seems to be really tight to put on. I don't know if it's meant to be like that, I suppose you don't want it falling off in the field, but you just want to, to slide it on there. It takes a bit of a wriggling and jiggling, but it does go on. And it also says to put a little bolt through there. I didn't, I didn't feel the need to do that. Uh, it felt more than solid for me. Pop it through there, make sure the bolt's sticking out the other side and you get your nut and that screws on. Make sure it's upright and just tighten them down. And now you've got your range finder and your screen, so that's half the battle done. So then what we're gonna do is get our tube, make sure it's the right, right one to fit our scope. Um, I find licking it helps it go on, just a bit of lubrication in there. Okay, so now that's on, I find it's best to put the battery on. So you've got a bit more room to, to fit it there. Okay, nearly there. Uh, camera goes on the back. It's fairly simple and obvious which way it goes around because of the writing. First time I put this together, it was in the dark and I couldn't see which way I went round. Uh, turned it on and everything was upside down. My fault. The battery plugs into the back here. Bang, straight into there. Then you need to get the wire off the screen and plug that also into your unit. And then you're ready to turn it on. And as you can see there, hopefully, the sun's not glaring off it, we have a perfect picture. Here you've got the two different ports. Uh, this one is the battery, so the left is for the battery and the right is for the screen. Now, the rangefinder, that runs off a lithium battery, so there's no, uh, there's nothing required there to be plugged in. All it needs is to be turned on. Now for a little more explanation on this rangefinder. So once you've turned it on, all you've got to do is press the on button again 
and it'll start range finding. So you can see 99 yards to 100 yards to that uh, hedge line there, uh, 300, 347 to the hedge line, 99 to that bit of ground there. If you want it in meters, if you're a meters kind of guy, then just press down this M button here, hold it. Just by holding that down, you can change it to meters, and that's all the settings I've really needed to use. Um, it came in meters and I just changed it to yards. I'm not sure how much batch will I get on the rangefinder, but if it's anything like any other rangefinder I've used, it'll be ages and ages. Yeah, that's basically how you put it together. Very simple, doesn't take long at all. One thing I will say that I didn't mention previously is that this night vision unit actually has a, a Wi-Fi inbuilt into it so you can watch and record from your phone. Um, I haven't needed to do this because I've only been shooting on my own really and when I've been shooting with somebody else they can just watch the screen but that option is there uh, for, for someone to watch on their mobile while you shoot. So that's the main gist of, uh, of the night sight, uh, fitting it together and whatnot. but how does it actually perform in the field? Now as you can see it is a little bit more bulky than your normal rifle. If you look at that silhouetted against the sky you are adding a lot more to your gun and that adds weight as well. However when you're shooting out of a car it's ideal and it really comes into its own. Also static shooting, when you've got your rifle rested on your knee, it's perfectly fine. One thing I'll say is when you put it on your shoulder, um, you know, the weight does disappear, you can move around freely, the bulk isn't there like it was on the older ones, which is something that I welcome greatly. Having said that, when you are shooting off hands, as long as you put your rifle in the shoulder, and I tend to, I tend to uh, lock my elbow as a hip support, it's fairly steady. When I was shooting this in the field, I got on with it really, really well. Thoroughly enjoyed using it, smashed a lot of rats. Uh, they, were, they were getting hit hard. I think, I'm, yeah, like I said, I must hit 20. My overall thoughts on this, on this bit of equipment is perfect. I think all of this, this kit together, just over 1,300. Um, I'd have to add it all together to be sure, but for that kind of money, you are getting a premium product and a premium setup for night hunting. And this doesn't only work in the night as well, you can use it in the day if you're just after a bit of recording. So as you can see here, if a pigeon came into that fir tree, I wouldn't have a problem with, uh, with shooting it. So thank you for watching. In the next video we'll be looking at the hunting aspect of this rifle, how it performs. You can see we've got a rabbit here um, and there'll be plenty more where this comes from. We'll get, we're going to be, the main quarry we're going to be targeting is rats and rabbits and I'll just do voiceovers and, and just give my thoughts and opinions on how I found it performed in particular places. So thank you for watching, uh, just missed that there, straight over his head, <laughs> rookie mistake. If you like the video please do give it a, a like and subscribe, thanks very much, bye now. One thing I will say is when you put it on your shoulder